Hey, it's Rick Kettner here, and today we're going to go through the six books that I read in April 2022. I'm going to talk a little bit about why I chose to read them and what you can expect to get out of them if you decide to check out one or more of the books for yourself. Now, as always, if you've recently enjoyed a really great book, I invite you to let me know about it by posting a comment down below. Please include the title of the book, the authors of the book, and a brief description about what it is that you enjoyed most about the book. But with that said, let's dive straight into the list, beginning with The Psychology of Money, Timeless Lessons on Wealth, Greed, and Happiness by Morgan Housel. This book is about how emotions and beliefs influence the way that we think about money and how we can make better financial decisions when we understand our own biases. Now, one of my favorite takeaways from the book, among many other powerful insights, is the idea that the number one benefit of gaining financial freedom is that it allows us to control our own time. So while there are all kinds of things that we can use money for, including buying nice things that might slightly improve our overall quality of life, the author makes the case for the idea that the best use of money is to gain control over our time and our resources. And in doing so, we can often unlock opportunities to gain even stronger financial freedom. For example, when we're not worried about having to pay bills and work month to month on our income and just barely managing our finances, this frees us up to take advantage of promising new opportunities that might come up where having control over our time and energy allows us to jump on those opportunities and take advantage of them. So with all of that in mind, and especially this idea that time and controlling our time and energy is one of the best benefits of financial success, much of this book really focuses around gaining and then protecting financial stability. So rather than focusing on just maximizing return on investment and trying to accumulate more and more, in some cases by taking on high-risk investments that if things go wrong could potentially lead to financial ruin, this book is much more about gaining and protecting financial security so that we can gain this big benefit of having control over our time and energy for the duration of our lives. So if, like me, you're interested in not only gaining financial freedom, but also protecting and sustaining it, I highly recommend that you pick up a copy of The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. Next up, we have Under a White Sky, The Nature of the Future by Elizabeth Colbert. This is a fascinating book about how humans have tried to control nature throughout history and how many of our efforts have led to unintended negative consequences. Now, unlike so many books that start with really strong arguments or attempt to steer the narrative in a specific direction, the author really goes out of her way to just simply present facts and observations from the front lines of our attempts to do things like control invasive species, manage complex ecosystems, and even mitigate global warming. Now, in doing so, it lays out two different sides of the story. First, how our past interventions have historically led to unintended negative consequences. And then second, how further interventions are almost certainly needed to reverse the damage that we've already done and take things in a more positive direction. So in many ways, the overall theme of the book is how we need to get much, much better at controlling nature, not only to reverse some of the damage we've already done, but to take things in a much better direction in the future. So if, like me, you're interested in understanding some of the real challenges that we face and some of the efforts to resolve them, then I recommend that you pick up a copy of Under a White Sky by Elizabeth Colbert. Next up, we have How to Talk So Kids Will Listen and Listen So Kids Will Talk by Adele Faber and Elaine Maslish. With two young boys of my own, I'm always looking for practical advice and insights into how to become a better parent. And when one of my friends recommended this as his favorite book on parenting, I decided to check it out. I discovered that it's been around for decades. It's an exceptionally well-rated book. So of course, I decided to check it out. Now, this book really focuses on how to communicate more effectively with your children. And it especially focuses on how to manage their emotions and how to help them deal with and process process their emotions more effectively. So rather than trying to tell our children that they shouldn't feel a certain way or 
to explain perhaps logically why they should feel a different way because of a certain situation. This book really focuses on acknowledging and empathizing with their feelings and how doing so can actually allow us to avoid situations that might otherwise spiral out of control. So by simply really empathizing with our kids, acknowledging their emotions and connecting with them on that level, Overall, we can actually improve our ability to communicate with our kids and resolve difficult challenges and move things in a much more positive direction. Now, the book also focuses on other important topics, including promoting cooperation, alternatives to punishments, and things like encouraging autonomy in your kids. So, if like me, you're looking for ways to become a better parent and to communicate more effectively with your children, consider picking up a copy of How to Talk So Kids Will Listen and Listen So Kids Will Talk by Adele Faber and Elaine Maslish. Next up, we have 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos by Jordan B. Peterson. This book is about how to deal with chaos and uncertainty, and it contains practical life advice presented as 12 rules to live by. Now, many of the rules presented in the book are pretty self-explanatory, and they're things that you've almost certainly heard about at some point in your life, and yet being reminded of them in this format and getting Peterson's thoughts on them can still be very beneficial. And some of the other rules in the book were required a little bit further explanation, which of course Peterson was all too happy to provide. Now, I will say, in general with this book, I had somewhat mixed feelings because on the one hand, I felt like the advice was really practical, very useful. These are ideas that almost everybody would benefit from understanding on a deeper level. And yet, often I found myself somewhat annoyed at Peterson's tendency to wander into seemingly random and irrelevant topics. Sometimes he would loop back to the core rule that was being discussed and everything would tie back together. But at other times, it just felt like he was sharing knowledge for the sake of sharing knowledge. And I found that somewhat annoying at times. But with all of that said, I think it's important to keep in mind, it is his book, he, it's his prerogative to cover whatever he wants to cover, and clearly he is doing something very right, because there are a lot of people out there that absolutely love this book. It's very, very well rated, and he has some raving fans out there that love his talks and his videos online and his books as well. And so at the end of the day, I enjoyed the book. I enjoyed it enough to consider checking out his next book, which I plan to do shortly. And so if, like me, you're interested in practical life advice, simple ways that you can make your life better, then I do recommend you consider checking out 12 Rules for Life by Jordan B. Peterson. Next up, we have The Whole Brain Child, The 12 Revolutionary Strategies to Nurture Your Child's Developing Mind by Daniel J. Siegel and Tina Payne Bryson. This is another excellent book on how to communicate more effectively with your children. And this book really focuses on using the power of conversations to nurture brain development. It's packed with practical tips and insights on how to handle difficult or stressful conversations, but not just in the moment, how to use these conversations as an opportunity to better prepare kids for handling similar conversations in the future so that they understand how to deal with their emotions and how to resolve different conversations conflicts or difficulties that they will inevitably face. Now, one of my favorite takeaways from this book is a strategy called connect and redirect. It's particularly useful when a child is reacting to a situation or conflict with a high degree of emotion. And when that happens, one of the best things that we can do is first and foremost, connect with them on an emotional level, acknowledge what it is that they're going through and make it clear that we understand the emotion that they are dealing with. Even if, for example, that emotion happens to be directed at us. In such a situation, we can say something like, you're really mad at me right now, or you're really frustrated. And by acknowledging their emotion, this opens the door for us to then connect over to the logical side of their brain by asking a follow-up question. So once we've acknowledged their emotion, we might say something like, you know, why was that child acting that way? Or why did that child frustrate you? Or here's what you want, here's what I want. What do you think is a solution that will resolve both of our needs? By asking such a question after connecting with them emotionally, we can redirect their thought pattern over to the logical side of their brain and cause them to try to come up with a solution. So we're effectively teaching them how to 
understand and recognize their own emotions, and then how to bridge that over to the logical side of their brain where they can actually work to resolve the issue and move things forward. And not only, again, does this help us in this one particular conversation or moment, but it helps set the stage for them to do so in future situations where we might not actually be around. Now, many of the ideas from this book really focus on understanding the different ways that children react to situations based on what brain state they're in, whether they're in their emotional brain or their logical brain, and just in general, how we can help foster the ability for them to take a whole brain approach to dealing with various challenges and conflicts. So if, like me, you're interested in not only communicating more effectively with your children, but also helping them develop the ability to deal with situations more effectively on their own, then I highly recommend that you consider picking up a copy of The Whole Brain Child by Daniel J. Siegel and Tina Payne Bryson. Next up is Every Moment Matters, how the world's best coaches inspire their athletes and build championship teams by John O'Sullivan. This book is about the human side of coaching and how coaches can make the most of every moment that they have with their athletes. Now, I am not a coach, I'm not interested in becoming a coach, but I am interested in understanding how coaches think and finding out how their insights and their ideas might translate over to raising kids to enjoy the many benefits and the many positive aspects of playing in sports or engaging in athletics. And I was pleasantly surprised to find that much of the content in this book translated over very nicely to being a parent interested in raising athletic kids, including topics such as fostering a love of sports, creating engaging training sessions, focusing on the needs of the athlete, helping them gain meaningful experience, and many other helpful insights and ideas. Now, of course, much of the book is more geared towards someone who is an active coach or someone who is interested in becoming a coach, but for my purpose, what I really got out of this book is just many different insights and ideas for how to be more effective as a parent when it comes to raising kids that find enjoyment and satisfaction in playing sports and even just discovering the sport that is the best fit for them and their needs and what it is that they want to set out to achieve in life. So whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, whether you are a coach, maybe you want to become a coach, or like me, you're just a parent that wants to understand coaching and how to better support your kids in athletics, consider reading Every Moment Matters by John O'Sullivan. Anyway, those are the six books that I read and enjoyed in April 2022. Of course, there are many more books that I'm very excited to check out over the coming weeks and months. So be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future updates. Mm -hmm. 